Hey, Nathan, and you automakers, give it back. Give it back, man. Give it back. These are the top 10 things we want back, and we want them back now. Yeah. Or oh. else. Or else, yeah. Over the years, you guys have taken away some of the coolest things and most expensive and most useful things out of a car. And in this video, we're going to tell you what those top 10 things are. Do I get to mention CD players? That's on your own list. Oh, I don't uh, want the CD player back. All right, all right, I won't mention that yet. The, these are things that many modern cars are missing that we want back. All right, so TFL Fashion, Nathan, started at 10, moved down to number one. Right, and they're not exactly in a particular order. We just kind of threw them in, in in any order. But I want to mention something real quick, which is we know that some vehicles still have some of these features, but many do not, or it's disappearing. Keep that in mind. And number 10 is a spare tire. Yeah, uh, this... A can of this does not replace a spare. No bueno. I have that in my <laughs> wife's car and it's really infuriating. She has a mini and I know a lot of you are gonna say, but the weight, it's about the weight. Dude, I'm willing to strap that thing to the roof, okay? I want a spare tire, period. That's it, I want a spare tire. Yeah, cause look, run flat tires are you know, a band-aid at best. Yeah. And they're expensive to replace. And they're heavy and they don't perform as well as other tires. And you know, a, a can of this stuff is just insulting <laughs> especially if you're off-road it works like one out of three times <laughs> yeah you know and, and god forbid you cut a sidewall you're done so bring back the spare tire every time we get a car and i open up and i see you know a real spare tire my heart just fills with joy and i'm not talking about those little uh you know 50 kilometer i'm i'm even donuts. fine with that but i agree with the a full-size spare is great but just a donut would be enough for little cars. Please do that. And these are safety things, right? You don't wanna be stranded on the side of the road in a winter storm, you know, with no way to get to shelter because the auto manufacturer decided that the best solution was not to have a spare tire. Yes, yes. And regardless of what you say, it is also less expensive for the automaker to put in a little tiny repair kit as opposed to having a proper spare tire with a proper jack. All right, what's number nine? Number nine, Pop-up headlights. Yes, please. Boy, that, but that, this really ticks off certain people, especially like the, the younger crowd who just don't get it. Pop-up headlights look cool. That's all there is to it. There's there's no, I know there's no logical thing in aerodynamics, whatever, I don't care. They look cool. You know, there were a bunch of like uh, overly rich Germans who would complain about the fact that their aero on their cars, on their Porsches was being disintegrated or being wrecked when they were on the Autobahn doing 150 miles an hour with Roman and Schuligun, I can only go 199 <laughs> kilometers an hour and I need like the headlights to go down, but it's nighttime, it's no good. It's not good. Yeah, pop up headlights, they're, they're like uh, the coolest accessory on a beautiful car that you can have because Just it changes the profile. Yeah. It's, there's something so satisfying when you know the lights go bloom or like in a Corvette, you know? How about when, the they, flip went, when they flip forward? Oh my God, that OBGT blew. GT up and over? Dude, you wouldn't believe how many cool headlight like things they have in terms of like an algorithm, all these different ways of making it happen. And here's the cool part, it changes the personality of the car. You have two personalities in one car. And when they break, you can make it wink. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can. And eventually they will break. All right. So um, the next one is real buttons. Oh, God, yes. Please. 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 Enough with the minimalist Tesla uh, screen every, or even Eurivian. Just knock it off, would you? They're distracting. They're dangerous. They don't work. They get smudgy. Uh, they get uh, confusing. You know, me menu within a menu within a menu. Just knock it off. Just give us real buttons. Yeah, we're talking about pressure pads too. Hate those. Pressure pads look like buttons in some cases. A lot of people are putting them on steering wheels, Volkswagen. And when you see those things there and you're pressing them, you don't quite feel the rewarding click, click of a button. And because of that, you sometimes have to take your eyes off the steering wheel and look down and go, oh, okay, wait, I did hit that button. That's not what you want. It, in many ways, they really are a bit of a distraction. I know it's cheaper just to have a whole pad that has five buttons as opposed to five individual buttons. I get it. But at the same time, there's some really inexpensive cars that can get by with just using buttons. So why can't we do that on other cars? Yeah, and or how about uh, knobs as well? Buttons and knobs. Use knobs, both. oh yeah. Go, go, just go hog wild and put knobs for 
tuning and for uh, volume and uh, and stop doing this. Yeah, none of this. Yeah, we don't want to do this. BMW, no. No, no. Bad the, the, BMW. Bad, bad. Doesn't Shame. Work. Shame. Yeah. Let's just stop that. Or, or you know, like when you watch like like Star Wars or Star Trek, and you know they're like doing all this but stuff. They're not on, though. That's the thing. The Star Wars, they have like buttons and switches. We don't want this. We, we don't want be like moving tiles around on That's, on the windscreen. Nobody no, wants no, that. Nobody wants that. It's it's great for movies. It's horrible for cars. I agree. Now, one thing that is going away, but is on a couple cars still, a proper handbrake. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, that is so satisfying, especially if you're on dirt and you want to do a J-turn. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing more satisfying than flying on some dirt, pulling that handbrake, and having that car spin around. Come on, give us that joy back. Now, a lot of uh, e-brakes, including the one that's even on my car, oh, are God. automatic. And so if it detects a hill or whatever, some, in some cases, they will engage. In other cases, once you put them into drive, they'll disengage. I understand that that's kind of cool, and then some of you guys are like, well, it saves a lot of space. No, 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 it really, it really doesn't. The, the thing about a handbrake is that it kind of sits there and kind of off to the side in a spot that's really not being used and really isn't being used ever. So don't give me that. Just give me the handbrake. Plus, it gives you like this level of um, control that you don't, because electronic brakes are either on or off, mm -hmm. right? There's no like, hey, I can pull it a little bit and slow down. You've done that, right? When, oh. like, like I'm pulling into your garage or coasting in and then you use a handbrake. Well, I, to... I do J-turns in my garage in the back in the old days. <laughs> but you, forget the J-turn, but you know what I mean? You just kind of pull in and use a handbrake yeah. to, to, to coast in and then Well, stop especially right if before. you live in a hilly area and I have family in San Francisco. And aside from having <laughs> manual transmissions, which is really nice if you're on a super steep hill and you have that little thing in there and then you just kind of ease off. And once you learn how to make that work without having to destroy your... And, and I know you're going to be stuck saying like, you know, like the, the handbrake that turns on when you open the rear door and you're backing up, right? Ugh. Right, because that, that makes the vehicle safer. But you know, at some point there's like a lot to be said for actually having a skill set to drive something or do something. It makes that chore, or in our case, that pleasure fun. Which we do have on the list, by the way, where we can go in a little bit more in depth on that. So the next one, oh, uh, this is a, a good old fashioned one. Wind wings, otherwise known <laughs> as smoker wings or I, vape wings nowadays, I suppose. Those, those little triangle windows that you can kind of either crank open manually or there's like little like uh, knobs on them. Or a little thing that you'd yeah, spin no. and then pop them open. And in some vehicles, there's a couple out there, they're actually automated where you hit a button and they can open and close. And what's really cool about them, aside from that, if you're a smoker, it's, it's really awesome because you just flick your ash and you don't have a whole lot coming in is the fact that you can get just a little bit of a breeze into your car without having to actually lower your larger side windows. Well, and and you know, it's really cool. The second you open up the sunroof or even lower your side window by like even a few millimeters, right? Half an inch, it just becomes like a volcano has just erupted inside the car. It's All so the pressure loud. changes yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, these little windows, they're quiet, they ventilate the vehicle. Yeah. And they're elegant. They're they're really cool. Yeah. And almost every vehicle my dad had, he'd have a big fat cigar hanging out there, or a cigarette, or whatever the hell he was smoking at the time. And he'd flick it and everything else, and then he'd close it when it was done. And yeah, okay, the car still smelled a little bit like smoke, but it was better than having the window down and having the ash and everything blow through the car. So I thought those were really cool. All right, the next one on our list, uh, analog gauges. Yeah, they're going the way of the dodo, dude. Mm -hmm, they are indeed. Now, this is a mixed bag because I know, and we know the benefit of having digital gauges, especially on vehicles like Hyundai's where um, if you hit the turn signal, you can actually get an image from a camera on what's going on on one side of you or the other. That's really handy. But the other side of it is that a lot of people do not rely on those and look at them going, you know what, if something goes wrong with my car, I can't even tell how fast I'm going or how much gas look, I have. Look, I think Porsche nailed it with like their, you know, the five gauges that go across the cluster, right? Yes. You've got uh, tachometer, speedometer, oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel, and water temperature. Blood type. Yeah, and, and they're always in the same place and, you know, it's based basically on a performance car because yeah. when you're racing, the problem with these analog gauges is you could put so much information there, including- You mean your digital gauges? Digital gauges, sorry. The problem with digital gauges is way too much information, right? Including, yeah. I mean, it's handy to have navigation, but then once upon a time there was navigation and then you change it and all of a sudden it becomes your favorite radio station, then you change it again and it becomes your fuel economy. It just gets very um, distracting once again because there's just way too much, sometimes less is more. I can't download adult videos on my main <laughs> IP. I don't understand why. It's a real issue. So I, I just, it's a 50 50 split, but uh, yeah, a lot of people want regular analog uh, gauges back. The next one on here, mud flaps. 
and or fenders because the whole thing of wide wheels and tires, which I've talked about, we've all talked about, and we all hate them, but it's actually a safety thing. And you know what, what? I, I mean, I get the, the whole custom offset truck trend where, you know, the tires stick out like six inches outside. Six of the, inches minimum. Minimum, yeah. But the downside of that is if you're driving in mud, rain, dirt, God help your truck because it's going to get so dirty or car and God help the person behind you because you're going to either get them so filthy or so rocks. blinded or so, you know, windshield broken by rocks and pebbles that get thrown up. I don't understand that. At one point, it was like a courtesy to all of us to have mud flaps to keep, you know, all of us safe on the road. And yet today, the exact opposite. Well, what they'll do in order to get around certain laws, some places enforce them more than others, is they'll put little mud flaps on there, but the wheels stick out super, super wide and there's no fender over them. So it doesn't even matter, it won't do anything. So it, this is more of a, actually this is a legal thing. You're not supposed to have a tire sticking out more than I think an inch past your fender. And these people take advantage of it. And they're doing it for looks. There's no performance gains from it, especially with trucks. And most people are doing them with trucks. Um, if yeah. you're doing, or with off-roaders, but off-roaders, the thing about that is, in many cases, Look, if it's you want, not a great idea. If you want that off-road, fine, but then don't drive it on road. I mean, that's, that's or really... Or just find, you know, put on, they have temporary fenders you can put on. There's there's different ways around these things, but nonetheless, we, I know we sound like old men griping, but honestly, well, I've, oh, I've had windows sacrificed well, before to Before you say that, there, I don't want to, you know, it, it is also cool to have mud flaps. Like, there's like the, the Defender in the Serengeti look, right, where they have these wide mud flaps to cover the rear wheels. That's a cool look. Or there's the WRC look, right, same thing, where they have these big old flaps that come over that's a cool look, dude. I'm not saying it's it, it, it's just old men being cranky. No, well, you, you but can have a cool look and have it look like a race car or like an Africa, you know, across the Serengeti car, without necessarily blinding the rest of us. Yeah, it's, it, the whole blinding part is thing, and so there's no performance gains from those anyway. So guys, just stop it. Okay, the next one. Uh, this one is is currently for California, but I think it's going to spread across the country, and it's uh, regular license plates. Yeah, this idea of having digital plates seems like a really bad idea. I think it's going to be awesome when people start hacking into them and saying really nasty things to people and without knowing it. Or, or advertising. Yes. You, all of a sudden, you're an advertisement for the for the nearest Cracker Barrel as you're driving by. You can see you can see like the company thinking about that right now, oh, right? Well, I don't know if Cracker Barrel per se, but, but, but you yeah. you know what I'm saying? It, it like knows where you're at. Yes. So as you're driving by the Cracker Barrel, all of a sudden, besides just your license plate, it also says, exit 28. <laughs> I think it'd be really funny if you're driving behind someone and, and the license plate suddenly says bored with a question mark, try a Coors today. <laughs> you, know, so, you know what I mean? Like while you're sitting there in traffic going, you know, bumper plus, to bumper. Plus people have already hacked them. Yeah. Right? So, you know, and I think it gives up your location, gives up personal information. This seems just like trouble for the sake of it. And of course, it's going to just generate more tax revenue, right? Because it's going to be more expensive. Yeah. The, well, I think that's the point. Though. And what about all those prisoners who will be out of a job? That's a really good point. Unless, of course, we teach them to, to program these plates. <laughs> then they have high-tech jobs when they got out of prison. You're welcome. <laughs> Gavin Newsom, call me. I will help your state. Okay. Um, okay, so the next one, fog lights, proper fog lights, yeah, I should th say. There's this trend for all weather lights now where they're getting rid of fog lights uh, because the lighting pattern uh, works within all parameters of weather. I get that, but fog lights are just so cool, right? Having that separate button to be able to either, you know, illuminate the road that's underneath the car, right? Because that's what they do there, usually yeah. farther down, or just to be able to shed more light if it's very dark. And so I like having a separate fog light. I think it's cool, and I think it makes the car look cool from a visual standpoint. I do like having control on my lights, to be honest with you. Yeah. So being able to have fog lights or even extra driving lights that come on and come off that I can control, I do like having that because they're still not smart enough in my mind, even in Mercedes, to give me the illumination I want all the time. And I love those European rear fog lights mm -hmm. where, you know, you push it and it becomes, one of the, I think it's the outside light so it marks you where you're at on the road, glows brighter in fog. I think that's such a cool and smart. I think it's a really smart idea, but yep. I, there's, for some reason, they're resistant to that here. Okay, and then number, number one. one, but this is not, we're not done. We've got a lot more from but this. You probably can guess this one. Manual transmissions. Yes, we want them back. Give us back our manuals. Please, now, manufacturers. There is some good news. Uh, Mini recently announced, we actually have this, uh, if you go to alltflcar.com, uh, is uh, they are bringing back more manual transmissions in their vehicles. They got rid of a few and now they're bringing a couple back, which is great. But for the most part, we're at about 4% or 5% of vehicles built 
and sold in the United States have manual transmissions. I'm going to throw out a challenge, Nathan. Do it. And last week, the news story was the Trader Joe's said that it will never, never go to self-service checkout. They okay. made that pledge. And I will throw out a challenge to any manufacturer to commit to never, never getting rid of the manual. At least having one automobile in your lineup that will have a manual. Wouldn't that be cool? It would be cool, but you've already, 90% of the automakers just don't do them Then anymore. bring them back. Okay, I'll talk to Lexus and see what they'll do about that. Uh, and by the way, if you're curious, uh, like you said, at altfl.com, we have a story which basically goes through all the manufacturers and all of the manuals that you can still get. Yeah, Uncle Zach made that for us. Thank and, you. And he updates it, yeah. yeah so uh, a couple others I want to throw in here. No, wait, before we get to this, the, like Nathan came up with these ideas, and these were his personal ideas, so I said, Nathan... Make them your own personal. They're not all mine. Uh, there's a couple that are actually Zach's. We were just talking all about right, him. Right. So Zach wants more analog cars. Remember you mentioned that? So well, he basically wants, he, he, what he's thinking is. Like bring back old cruise control. Old, yeah, old school cruise control, having the vehicles have less sensors on them because the IIHS is demanding them, which makes cars more expensive and also makes them more technical. Yeah, yeah, stop vibrating my steering wheel. Stop you know, pulling the steering wheel out of my hand and making the car turn. Stop vibrating my seat. Stop beeping at me. Stop uh, yelling at me when my eyes are off. The road. Just, just old cruise control. Or if you're going to vibrate my seat, can I direct you exactly where I want you to vibrate my seat? <laughs> that's, that's, your, that's on your list, Nathan. Okay, that's okay. That's, well, they, they never. Okay. So uh, here's one. Now, I, you got all grumpy about this. CD players. Oh, God. Now, now, I'm not saying bring them back, but I have a lot of people who have written me and and and, and have spoken to me over the past couple of years. Well, and I'm said, sure people have like just piles of CDs. Exactly. In their garage, they have like I do too, yeah. uh, and, books and books and, filled and you, with them. And if you're old enough, cassettes. But do we really want to bring those things back? Uh, well, well in, the, in the age of like Pandora or Spotify, do you really want to have to like, you know, dig through your CDs and then... I'm just saying what some people want back. I mean, never bring back that CD changer where it had six CDs in the trunk that you loaded up once and never changed. That that good riddance. I have that in my Jeep. Yeah. Yeah. Good and it's, no, it, it works really well. And every once in a while, every blue moon, like if, if satellite's not working very well or whatever, I click over to it and it works just fine. Right, what else is on your list? Uh, curb feelers. Oh, yeah, gosh. Those little, little spiky. metal things that, yeah, made yeah, noise. Yeah, yeah those, those things were great, especially on people who are learning how to park. Uh, yes, okay, you, there's electronic things that do that, but curb feelers, really cheap way to embarrass the hell out of whoever's driving and parking. And the final one is T-tops. Oh, God. Come on, you miss them. They you leaked. miss your big shoulder pads. There's no place to put them when you take them off. Oh, my God, they were. You absolutely miss them. You had cars with T-tops. I did. Uh, I took them off once, and then they rattled around the back. Yeah. And then I put them back on and never used them again. Boy, when I mentioned T-tops, Zach's face almost fell off. He and was not happy. sometimes they had keys, and you'd lose a little yeah, key. But oh, they God. Were, yeah, so what we'd like you guys to do is please respond to this by letting us know what you want back, what's been taken away from you, and what you want back from the automakers. Yep, let us know. Um, and um, let us know if you think that uh, T-Top should come back. Oh, come on, curb feelers. All right, see you guys next time. Ciao.